As many of you might know, I spend a lot of my time in Philadelphia. Uh, I have one more year of school before I graduate and get ordained a priest. Uh, but I have a friend down in Philly, uh, his name is Tom, and he recently got a new car. He's really excited, brand new car, right off the lot, zero miles on it. It's that like weird, indeterminate blue color that only cars can be, you know the one? Uh, and he was really, really excited because it was a hybrid. And so he was excited to be able to save some money on gas uh, because we all know gas is going up and in Philly it's like $4 now. Um, so he needs all the help he can get. But um, as a couple of weeks go by, a couple of months, he started realizing that he was, um, he was actually going to the pump just as often as he was before. And so he's spending just as much money on gas and he starts suspecting that maybe the hybrid function isn't working, the electric engine, something's wrong. Maybe he got like scammed on this car. And so he's getting really upset by this. He gets frustrated every day as he's driving to work. And so his work's really suffering from it because he's distracted all day by the fact that his car isn't working. Uh, so then he had to like stay late to make up some work. And then when he got home, he was so upset and it was so late, he forgot to plug in his phone. And it, like his whole life was just falling apart because of this. Uh, so the one day he was, he was on the Schuylkill Expressway, uh, which anyone who's been in Philadelphia knows is anything but express, right? Uh, and so he's in traffic in park, because of course he is, uh, and his phone is dead because he forgot to charge it last night. Uh, and so he is just stuck. And he has nothing to do. He has to wait like 10, 20 minutes before he can inch another couple feet forward. Uh, and so he goes down into the depths of despair, and he does something that I don't think anyone in this room has been desperate enough to do. He opens the glove compartment, and he takes out the owner's manual, <laughs> just for something to read, something to do. And the very first page, he opens it up, and it says, welcome and congratulations on buying your hybrid car. To activate the electric features of your car, simply flick the switch located behind the windshield wipers. Life would be so much easier if we just read the instruction manual, wouldn't it? <laughs> just whenever we, we got a new phone, a new watch, a new car, whatever, we just actually took the time to leaf through it and see, maybe there's something in there we didn't know. Maybe there's something in there to help us. And today, we hear from the owner's manual of life. Because in our first reading today, we heard some of the laws of God, that we have to protect the widow and the orphan, we have to provide for them. We have all these rules that we need to follow. Jesus is asked about which of the laws is the greatest, but our conception of the laws of God is a little off. Because when we think of the laws of God, we think about our laws, right? Our, our country puts forth these laws and it says, uh, everyone needs to follow these rules, you have to follow them because everyone else does. And if you don't follow them, we're going to punish you uh, because we just have to, we have to work in a society and, and that's that. No questions asked. And then some laws are just like you have to pay your taxes because the government wants your money. Uh, but the point is all these laws are meant to like enforce on you, to kind of like trap us, right? But God's law isn't like that. We use the word law, but really God's law is the instruction manual. It's telling us, here's how you get the most out of life. If you do these things, this is how you'll enjoy life the most. And don't get me wrong, it's not a fix-all. There's no switch in any car that can get rid of traffic on the Schuylkill. But it will make so much more just fit into place. If we follow the law of God, we'll be less distracted, we'll be able to work better, We'll remember to plug our phone in at night, hopefully. If we follow the law of God, things fit into place. And it's so hard sometimes. It's important to remember our, our psalm today. You see, the, the readings throughout the year are very carefully planned out by the church. And the church very, very carefully picks which reading goes on which day, and also which readings go together. And so the psalm is always meant to be a response to the first reading. And so what was our response in the psalm today? It was, I love you, Lord, my strength. 
That was supposed to be how we responded to our first reading, which is all about the laws of God. God said, do this, do that, or else you'll be in trouble. And somehow our response to that is, I love you, Lord, my strength. Like I said, our laws kind of push down on us. And yet we're saying that God is our strength, that he's holding us up. Because these laws are the instruction manual. We protect the widow and the orphan because then when we pass on, when we leave behind our children, our family, we know that everyone else will take care of them. We take care of others because it's the right thing to do. Because honestly, it feels good to help people. It makes us feel good. It helps us put a little pep in our step, maybe. It's just, it's good for us. It's healthy for us. It's like putting the right oil in the car. It makes us work better and throughout our lives. Another thing that the, the church spends a lot of time on uh, that we, we probably don't listen to as much as maybe we should, myself included, uh, are the prayers, some of the prayers throughout the Mass. So, pretty soon, water and wa- uh, bread and wine are going to be brought onto this altar, and uh, Father is going to pray over them, and he's going to say, Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed, above all, to your glory through Christ our Lord. And these words are important because they help us understand the readings all the more. What is our job in life? What is the thing we're supposed to do? Jesus tells us in the gospel, he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. When we dedicate our lives to God, when we put everything we have towards serving him, toward his majesty, whatever is done by us in his service will be directed above all to glory, to his glory, the glory of God. What's better than that? And then again, after the bread and the wine has been turned into the body and blood of Christ. After we have received that body and blood, we'll have another prayer right before the final blessing. Father will say, may your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them. That what we now celebrate in signs, we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. What lies within the sacraments? within the body and blood of Christ. What lies within them is his glory, his power. And we say that it becomes perfected in us. That God so loves us that not only does he want to give us all these things, he wants us to be the means of perfecting them. Because God's power isn't worth much if it doesn't do anything, right? What worth is a hybrid engine if you never turn the electric on? But if we allow God to enter into our lives, if we read the instruction manual, if we flip that switch, receive communion here today, if we turn that power on, the Lord our strength, if we let him take over our lives, how much more incredible they will be.